So let's go back to that crawling picture and updating it a little. So instead of a single spider, you can see that we have multiple spiders. Okay, so these could be distributed geographically or they could be just, uh, you know, multiple threads running on the same machine. But what they're doing is each of them is looking at a particular URL. It's picking out a particular URL from the queue, which is, so the URL frontier here is explicitly depicted as a queue, although it's not going to literally be a queue. I'm going to explain the structure later. But what each crawler will do is it will each crawler thread will just request the next URL from the URL frontier. It will get that URL. Then it will pass the links in the URL and also the text of course. The text will be sent to the indexing pipeline and the links will then be added back to the URL frontier. Okay, and so that will expand the uh, this particular region the crawled and parsed pages will go on increasing. So think of the URL frontier as some kind of a data structure and it's not going to be a queue as I said. It's going to be much more complicated and we'll look at that uh, later in this lecture. Now what is uh, a few more words about the URL frontier. This is not about implementation but uh, some some details some specifications. So firstly, the URL frontier could include multiple pages from the same host. Right? So for example, if you're crawling www.cisco.com, it's possible that there could be many pages in, the, in Cisco's file hierarchy, in Cisco.com's file hierarchy, which could be simultaneously residing in the URL frontier. So that should be easy enough to understand. And you must avoid trying to fetch all those pages from the same host at the same time. And that's because you may be overloading the server and that's not a good policy. At the same time, you must try, you, you shouldn't just wait doing nothing. You must try to keep all the crawling threads busy. And we'll see how to, how, how to do that, how to uh, trade off not bombarding a ser server too often and how to also keep all the crawling threads busy so that if they're not crawling that particular website, at least they can go to some other server and, you know, fetch some pages from there. I already talked about implicit and explicit politeness. Explicit politeness refers to specifications from webmasters on what portion of the site can be crawled. And implicit politeness means that even with without any robots.txt file, a crawler should avoid hitting any site too often. We just saw that. Okay, so uh, before I look at this slide, let me first show you this diagrammatically. This is the crawler architecture in slightly more detail. So the first thing I want you to focus on is the URL frontier, okay, which is sort of the queue. What we are trying to, let's try to trace uh, the sequence of steps that happen in this architecture. You're going to pick a URL from the frontier. Okay, so the fetcher, so, so the, this particular fetcher module will fetch the next URL from the URL frontier, the next URL to be fetched. So it will take the URL and send a request to the server which has that document stored. So it's going to fetch the document at that particular URL. Now in order to do that, it, it, it will have to translate, um, it will have to translate the URL into an IP address okay, and that's done by the DNS server. So it will send the URL to the DNS server. The DNS server will send back an IP address and then the fetcher will go to that IP address and fetch the document from there. Then it will parse the URL. Okay, so this is, that's the next step. The next step will be parsing the document that is fetched. And 
it will extract the links from it to other documents and it will also extract the text that will go into the indexing pipeline. Now, obviously before it sends the text into the indexing pipeline and, and before it extracts the links, it also has to ensure that this particular document has not been seen before. Okay, so as it's parsing, once it's parsed the whole text, it will generate some kind of a, so how do you check whether or not a document has already been seen before? You won't compare it, lit, you, you won't compare this document literally with every single document that you have fetched before. You will compute some kind of a checksum on this document. If you've done a course on you know, networking or data, data communications, you would know what a checksum is. You, you'll compute some kind of a checksum on this document and see if you've seen the checksum before. So, this particular disk that you see here, this particular data store, is a store of all document checksums or document fingerprints of documents that have been passed before. So it will compute the checksum and see if the checksum matches any of the checksums that have been computed before. If so, then it's very likely that this is this document is identical to a previous document. And so you will not do anything further with it. You will just move on to the next document. But if you have not seen this document, then you will send it for uh, into the indexing pipeline. And you will also move ahead with the links that are in that document and add them to your URL frontier. But you won't just directly push it into the URL frontier. There are a couple of more steps that you see here. What you want to do is as you're extracting the URL from this particular document, okay, now you've, you've determined that this document has not been seen before. So now you can go ahead and extract all the URLs from it. For each URL that you extract, you want to ensure that it passes certain tests. For example, it must confirm to the robots.txt file from that particular server or, or from that particular website. Likewise, you may not be interested in crawling every single web page. Maybe you could be, you know, you in, for your application, you may want to just build a crawler that will crawl only academic websites. Okay, so that particular filter may also be coming into play at this stage. So you'll ensure that your URL satisfies these constraints, robots.txt, your application specific constraints and so on. So that, so those robots.txt files will be stored here and other kinds of, you know, filters or regular expression that you want your URLs to match or not match. Those are all stored here. Once you ensure that your URL passes those tests, then you will check that your URL does not already exist in the URL frontier. Okay, so you will uh, check if it's already in the frontier and if so, then you'll just drop that particular URL. Of course, there'll be multiple URLs from the same page. So you're doing this for each of the URLs on the page that you're parsing. Okay. So you'll do duplicate URL elimination based on a set of URLs that you know you've already seen before and which exist in the URL frontier. And then you will add it to the URL frontier. So does everyone understand this pipeline in broad detail? So, yes sir. Okay. So one thing I'm going to do later in this lecture is I'm going to expand this box and you'll see an, uh, an, the architecture of this URL frontier, how this is implemented. What I want you to do is keep in mind that that's going to be a small part of this overall picture. Okay, so this overall picture is something that you should uh, keep in mind as you are thinking about crawling. So there are some slides on the uh, specific components that you just saw in the previous diagram. So there's the domain name server or the DNS server which is, uh, as you know, if you've done a course in networking, it's a simple lookup service on the internet. When you're given the URL www.cisco.com, for example, 
you want to ret that URL needs to be converted into its IP address for your request to be routed to that particular machine. So that translation from URL to IP address is done by the DNS server and it's not a single server that does the translation it's a distributed set of servers if you're familiar with the DNS protocol uh, it's actually implemented by a distributed set of servers around the world each server may maintain only part of the, the map from uh, URL to IP address so obviously the DNS server that is closest to you may not be able to map the URL, all the URLs that you're sending it to IP addresses. It may have to consult other DNS servers which may carry the information for some of the URLs which this, this guy doesn't have. So the lookup latencies can be high because you know this process of consultation can go back and forth between various DNS servers and it could take a few seconds uh, just to look up one particular uh, uh, you know URL now if you think about it even if you want to parse 20 billion pages uh, sorry not parse if you want to have about 20 billion pages in your index okay in your web index what is the let's say you want to crawl these many pages in one month okay which is reasonable it's not uh, probably web pages will be even more than this but you know this is a good good in, uh, this is a large enough number in order to do this you need to be crawling about 8000 pages per second i don't exactly remember if it's 8000 or some other you know, figure of the same order of magnitude though so these are the number of pages you want to crawl every second in fact, these are not even the number of pages you want to crawl every second. These are the number of pages that you want to send to your indexing pipeline every second. That means it's not referring just to the pages that you're fetching. It's referring to the pages that are actually passing the test that you saw in the previous figure. Okay. The, the, these are pages that are going through this, these particular modules. They're passing this particular text uh, test. So imagine that if you want to process these many pages every second and if you were to wait for a few seconds just for translating one URL then you know nothing's going to happen so the solution to this particular problem is that you could cache your uh, maps from URLs to IP addresses so I so once I've determined that www.cisco.com has this particular IP address I could save that IP address into my DNS cache which is local on my machine and the next time a URL comes, which is www.cisco.com slash so-and-so slash so-and-so, I know that the server is www.cisco.com and the file hierarchy is stored on that particular server. I can just look up the D DNS cache and figure out what the IP address is without going through this whole long process. Also, even if you implement this DNS lookup service on in your operating system the problem is that this kind of service is blocking that means once you send a particular URL to a DNS server until the DNS server tells you what the IP address is for that URL you cannot send another URL to that server okay so the common operating system implementations of DNS lookup are blocking that means only one outstanding request is allowed at a time to the DNS server so again, the, that constraint can be overcome by caching. And sometimes there are batch DNS resolvers which can collect a set of requests and send them out together. Anyway, that's not important. What's important is that there are ways to speed up this service, which otherwise can be pretty time consuming. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that when you parse URLs in this particular step, as you're parsing the URLs, some of the URLs could be relative, right? For example, let's say you are parsing this particular page on Wikipedia. Now this page could have a URL whose, uh, whose uh, form looks like this. 
it starts with a slash slash wiki slash wikipedia colon general disclaimer and so on so it doesn't specify the name of the server so this is a relative URL and this has to be translated into an absolute URL so the absolute URL will be you'll append the name of the server before this slash because this is the root this indicates the root of the file hierarchy so the name of the server will come before that and then whatever this URL was you just suffix it to the name of the server and this is the absolute URL which is the URL that you will actually uh, use for fetching okay, so this normalization must happen uh, as you are parsing the URLs because many of them can be relative URLs and then I already told you that if the content has already been seen because there could be many duplications may duplicate duplicated web pages on the web you just verify the fingerprint you just verify the checksum and by that you can check whether the by looking at the checksum you can determine if the page is already been seen before and if so you don't process it otherwise you process it okay so document fingerprints are like checksums which you can use there's also something called shingles which we haven't talked about you can just think of it as a form of document fingerprint so the filtering step this URL filter is again something you you know what this is it's just a regular a set of regular expressions that the URL must satisfy in order for it to be crawled or not crawled so once you fetch a robots.txt file from a particular server you won't have to fetch it repeatedly for future pages from that web server you just you can just cache it and then keep looking it up as you are fetching more and more pages from that server okay, so you don't have to fetch robots.txt for every uh, URL that you are parsing you just fetch it once and then cache it and then use it for this filtering step okay. and obviously the reason why you won't do that is Firstly, it'll waste your processing power. It's going to waste some time. And plus, it's going to bombard the web server with unnecessary requests. And I already told you that you have this other module, which is the module for duplicate URL elimination. And if your crawling is non-contiguous, that means you're not interested in crawling the same pages again and again, which could be something you want to do in some applications then you just have to see if your URL that you are just passed has already been seen before okay it's not necessary that the URL re currently resides in the URL frontier because the URL frontier is just the URLs that have been detected but they haven't been fetched the documents have not been fetched yet but if it's a one-time crawling it's possible that this particular document has already been fetched and processed and so it's been removed from the URL frontier it was there earlier but it's been removed so you have to keep track of all the URLs that have been not just uh, which not just exist in the URL frontier currently but which existed in the frontier at some point in the past and for continuous crawl uh, we'll, we'll look at that when you look at the URL frontier because it's possible that even after fetching a page you may want to again insert it back into the URL frontier so that you could fetch it again at some point in the future so let's uh, take a break at this stage and uh, after the break we'll come back and continue let's extend the architecture that we saw just before the break to make it distributed so how would you take the architecture and apply it to a distributed crawling system so what would be a distributed crawling system you would be running multiple crawling crawler threads under different processes that are running on different machines and these machines could be geographically distributed so if you remember the lecture where we talked about distributed indexing we saw that there are these clusters of machines that are sort of stacked up in data centers 
which are located in different parts of the world. So you can think of a distributed crawler as also existing in these different uh, data centers. So there could be one crawler in one city that crawls a certain subset of the web and then another crawler maybe in a different part of the world could could be crawling a different subset of the web maybe pa web pages that are located geographically closer to that particular data center so how do we extend then this architecture to uh, make it distributed so let's take a simple example let's say that there are 20 different machines that are going to crawl the web okay so let me just call them M1 to M20. Now what you will do is you will partition all the hosts that are being crawled into 20 sets. Okay, so imagine taking every single host, every single web server that's on the web taking the URLs for those servers and hashing those URLs to integers in the range 1 to 20. So for example, www.cisco.com could get hashed to, to, the, to the integer 5. This means that all URLs that are being stored by this web server for which this web server is the root of the file hierarchy all those URLs will be parsed by machine M5 and the other 19 machines are not going to uh, fetch documents located on this server so how does this how, how does this actually get implemented in that particular architecture well, we can modify that architecture in the following way. So this is the same diagram that you saw a few slides ago. Okay, you have this URL frontier from which a crawler gets the next URL to parse. The fetcher module will then take that URL and then fetch that particular document corresponding to that URL. And obviously it will go through the DNS server or the DNS cache and then it will go and retrieve the document from the particular server then it will parse it then it will check whether that particular document has already been seen before because as it's parsing the document it will compute the checksum and it will compare the checksum with the existing fingerprints or the existing checksums of past documents and if it finds a match then it knows that this is a duplicate document and it's just going to drop it if on the other hand it turns out to be a new document then obviously it's going to send it to the indexer and uh, let's not worry about the indexer here because we've we've seen that uh, earlier let's just focus on the crawling part it's going to go ahead and extract all the URLs from that document it will filter those URLs based on the robots.txt file and other constraints and now here's the key it's not necessary that this particular machine okay so let's say we are looking at machine m1 okay and let's say that this particular architecture that you're seeing over here ignore ignore this part for a moment let's say machine m1 is what's running this particular architecture obviously every machine will be running this architecture but let's we're just focusing on m1 for the moment now m1 is parsing a page which has a URL that's pointing to some web page on Cisco, Cisco's website. Okay, so this particular URL passes all the tests. Okay, the document passes the test that it's not a duplicate document and it's not a spam document. And the URL passes the robots.txt text, uh, test, sorry. Now, obviously, if this was 
just a single machine architecture, if this was not distributed, what would this machine do? It will just confirm that www.cisco.com does not exist in the URL frontier by checking that it hasn't seen this URL before and then it would add it to the URL frontier. But now it's going to compute that particular hash. Okay, it's going to compute which machine is meant to crawl this particular URL. So it will take the URL, it will look at the server's uh, uh, it'll look at the server's uh, address. Okay, so, so the server's address is just everything that comes before the first slash. It'll hash it to the integer 5. Now it knows that machine M5 is supposed to crawl URLs located on this server. So it'll take that URL and send it to machine M5. Okay it will send it to machine M5. Now what's happening in machine M5? Okay, so let's let's imagine that now we are looking at machine M5. M1 has sent that but this particular URL to M5. So now we are looking at a snapshot of M5. So M5 uh, is, uh, you know, it's, it's parsing its own, uh, it, it's crawling its own set of pages. And what it finds is, it finds that from M1, there is this particular URL that's coming in from M1. Now, this URL has already passed all the tests in M1, right? It has already passed this test and this test. So M5 doesn't have to, you know, employ these tests again on that particular URL. The very fact that it's coming in from a different node in the uh, you know, in that in that distributed system means that it's a valid URL. The only thing that M1, uh, sorry, the only thing that M5 has to test is whether this URL already exists in its URL frontier or not. If it already had been added to the URL frontier in the past, maybe even if it's not existing currently, maybe it was already added and fetched at some point in the past, then it doesn't have to do anything with this incoming URL. So it just has to do this duplicate URL elimination to check that this is not an old URL. And if it is a new URL, then it's going to add it to its own URL frontier. Okay, so M5 will add it to its own frontier. And when the time comes, this particular URL will be taken out of the frontier. And then the document corresponding to that URL will be fetched. Is that clear? How this distributed uh, architecture works. So obviously each machine is going to send the URLs that's destined for the other 19 machines out of, you know, its own uh, uh, network. And it's going to probably simultaneously receive URLs that it is supposed to crawl from those other 19 machines. Okay, so the incoming URLs are going into this module. The outgoing URLs are going out from here into the duplicate URL elimination modules of the other 19 machines. Any questions about this? No, sir. Okay. So is it clear or uh, is it totally going above your head? I mean, there are two scenarios in which you may not have questions. Either you're not understanding anything or you're understanding everything and I can go ahead. Which of these two is it? Because the next part is going to be probably the, uh, the most complicated part of this lecture. So I just want to be sure that uh, you understand what we've covered so far. The next part of the lecture is going to be on looking inside this box to see what this URL frontier actually is. But you, as you, you're looking at this, as you look at that, you, you'll have to keep in mind what's going on here to have the overall picture.
can i go ahead oh yes sir okay